Dr. Andrew Heaton is not a disciple of interferon, but he's not calling it a hoax either, because Dr. Heaton has seen this kind of furor before. Well, you know, it reminds me of the introduction of nylon shirts. I'm sure you remember everyone claimed how wonderful they were, and then they said how awful they were, and they stuck to your back, and then eventually they became used to them, and now nylon has its place and cotton has its place, and the same is happening with interferon. Maybe so, but the research continues to find out just where interferon fits in the healing process, and it all starts with the pint of blood you donate. And the red cells separate down to the bottom. You have the plasma on the top. And what we're after, the critical agent, is that small tan-colored layer, very, very fine layer, about a millimeter deep, that sits on top of the red cells. That layer contains the white cells, which need to produce the interferon in the manufacturing process. It's those white blood cells that fight viruses. And that's important, because many people believe that cancer is a form of a virus. Virus is, a, uh, is an agent which attacks the cells in your body by taking over control of the brain of your cells. It moves into a cell, disconnects the brain, and then instructs your body to start producing more copies of the virus. The way interferon acts is it passes to cells that have not yet been attacked, and it provides them with information which allows them to throw off the viral infection and to keep it at bay. Ever since it was first introduced, researchers have had high hopes for the use of interferon in battling cancer. But now comes word that the drug may be used in the battle against other dreaded diseases, like multiple sclerosis, along with a number of chronic viruses. Kathy Mitkiff, Area 10 Eyewitness News, Norfolk.